pretty sweet first clutch of 2021 really excited about this season Jason from Nyoka Ball Pythons and as you saw from the intro we have got our first clutch of 2021 very very exciting times around here so in this video um, we're gonna go through my process of pulling the mom off the eggs getting the eggs ready for the incubator and what I do with the mom and the enclo and the tub for that matter in terms of setting her up and getting her ready to get back on food as quickly as possible so let's have a look at what we do so if you couldn't tell from the intro the female that laid the clutch was a champagne het for orange ghost and she was bred to this male he he actually is a coral glow yellow belly het for pied. So in this clutch we are I'm really really hoping for some champagne het pieds and some coral glow champagne het pieds. Uh really like the combination of champagne and het pied together. So hopefully I'll get lucky and hit on a couple of them. Really nice male though. All right, so just one last thing before um, I get to putting on the clutch. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that last breeding season, we did that series of ball python breeding not using an ultrasound. So this season, once again, didn't invest in ultrasound. Um, if you watch that video, I talk about the different signs that I, or if you watch that series, sorry, in one of the videos I talk about the different signs that I look for um, when I start pairing and I'm looking at the clutch card for this clutch and I'm getting pretty good at, <laughs> at pairing with this clutch. I only paired twice, first time was December 4th, second time was January 7th, um, today's April 7th when I'm filming this video and when the clutch was laid and I tried to pair again in late February and she wasn't interested she went off food around mid-February uh, maybe early February I missed the ovulation in this one but she shed March 2nd and wasn't showing any interest in the male I believe I paired sometime in the middle of March she wasn't showing any interest in the mail, and I had a guest that missed that ovulation. But what I'm impressed with is I got it down to two breedings with no ultrasound. Um, and it's really just from observing the animal, looking at certain visual cues with this animal. What I noticed was, once again, that really, really, really strong food drive. When, we're, when the female is starting to build those follicles and you're getting further along in the season. And what I described in the, other, in the other video as that look. And it's just, and I showed animals that were displaying what I can only call as that look, but it's a certain look that the animals give you that are telling you that, yeah, they're ready to be paired. Um... <laughs> It's usually, I usually don't get it in two breedings, but I'm kind of surprised that the snake laid with just two breedings. And once again, I'm always breeding my females. I space out the, the locks about a month apart, and I find that's effective for me. But anyway, that's enough rambling and jibber-jabbering about nerding out over ball python breeding and how many locks and how I was able to do it. Let's get to the good stuff and look at the clutch. So here we have the star of this particular video. Um, you can see that this girl is sitting on a clutch of eggs. She's a champagne head ghost and I showed you the male before bred to a coraglow yellow belly head pied. 
So we are just going to remove her from her eggs. And again, you want to be careful when you're removing them from the eggs. You want to be able to locate the head and just secure the head, remove the tail from around the clutch, and it really is a very easy process. Let me just put her away and get her out of the way for a sec. And we are left with one, two, three, four, five, what looks to be good eggs. One thing that you do want to do um, when you're removing the female from the eggs, I didn't have to with her. You see how concave her belly is and how shrunken she is? But you always want to, oh, she doesn't look too happy. You always want to check to make sure that all the eggs have come out of the girl. If all the eggs haven't come out, you want to put her back because she may not be finished. But this girl clearly is finished. So I'm going to put her, this time I'm going to put her away. Okay, so before I put away the clutch, I always like to make sure I have everything ready. So I've had this tub in the incubator already. Incubator, set, incubator is set at 89.5 degrees. This tub was in there already. The vermiculite is already wet. It's been in the incubator for the last three or four days because I was expecting this clutch to come. I also have the tub labeled with the clutch number and the expected hatch date and of course always got to have your clutch card telling me the clutch uh the parents of the clutch when it was laid i gotta add the amount of eggs it was we said five eggs and the expected hatch date once i got all that ready then we're good to put the clutch of eggs in and put them away all right guys so here is our clutch of eggs that's simply so well let me see what I have in there. Sometimes I will use the easy hatch trays and I really like them. But I am expecting more clutches than <laughs> I actually have easy hatch trays. So what I will do when the clutch is all stuck together like this, I'll go old school and use the oh sorry, out of the shot. I'll go old school and use the light diffuser and I usually stack two on top of each other just to give it a little push it up a little higher off the to make sure it's off the vermiculite goes in they've been candled and they all look good cover it with your press and seal or ziploc not ziploc um, Cling wrap. Thank you. Cling wrap, whatever you're using. I like to use it just to lock in the humidity into the tub. Close it off and it's ready to go into the incubator. So now that we've done all the fun stuff, there's a little bit of work to be done. We need to clean out this tub, throw out all the bedding, clean out the tub, give it a good scrub and a good wash to get the egg scent completely out of the tub. Um, one thing I will also do that some people neglect is cleaning the top of the rack and make sure I give the top of the rack a good cleaning. Um, so let's go do that. Uh, rinse off the snake and I'll be able to put her back. So let's go in first before I rinse off the snake. Let me go and clean up the tub. All right, so the tub has been cleaned out. I've put in fresh bedding. I've washed the, the coupling. I have fresh, a clean uh, deli cup, fresh water. Now I'm gonna go rinse off the snake, weigh the snake just so I can monitor its progress bouncing back from laying the eggs and then put her back in so I'll be right back okay she is rinsed off and weighed um, she just reminded me I forgot to mention why we rinsed them off and we're really just rinsing them off so that she doesn't look happy at all we're really just rinsing them off 
so that the egg smell will come come off of them so hopefully they'll get back to eating and their regular routine a little quicker she doesn't look too happy so I'm gonna close her tub let her rest a bit and she'll be able to get a drink of water if she wants and be able to rest after the stressful egg laying that she went through today all right well that's about it in terms of the process of putting away a clutch um, once again, I want to thank you for watching our videos. As always, please like, share, subscribe. Um, hopefully, you and your families are keeping safe. Everybody here is good. Uh, Till the next video, we'll see you. Take care. Peace.